Have you ever wondered why your workouts aren't giving you the results you desire? Are you curious about the difference between cardio and conditioning? Do you know the three factors to consider for improving your conditioning? Today we're exploring the exciting world of conditioning workouts and their role in enhancing athletic performance and overall fitness. We'll be focusing on three key areas that could be the game changer in your fitness journey. So stick around as we delve into these three crucial fitness factors that can take your conditioning to the next level. So what exactly is conditioning and how does it differ from cardio? Great question, let's dive right in. When we think about cardio, often the first thing that comes to mind is the classic long distance run or a heart racing cycling session. Cardio, short for cardiovascular exercise, primarily focuses on improving the heart's ability to pump blood and increasing lung capacity. It's a broad term, encompassing any exercise that raises your heart rate and keeps it there for a while. On the flip side, conditioning is a more specific and goal-oriented form of exercise. It's about training your body to be more efficient and effective in a particular sport or activity. It's about improving your athletic performance, rather than just your heart health. Conditioning can involve cardio, but it also includes strength training, agility drills, and other exercises tailored to your specific goals. Now, let's talk about some of the benefits of improved conditioning. First off, there's the reduced risk of injury. When your body is conditioned, it's better prepared to handle the stresses of physical activity. You're less likely to pull a muscle, sprain an ankle, or suffer other common sports injuries. That's a big plus. Next, we have improved coordination. This is especially important for athletes, but it's beneficial for everyone. Good coordination can make everyday tasks easier and more efficient. It can also help prevent accidents and injuries. And last but not least, there's the increased fat-burning potential. Conditioning exercises often involve high-intensity workouts, which can help you burn more calories in less time than traditional cardio. Plus, the more muscle you have, the more calories you burn, even at rest. So, conditioning can be a powerful tool in your weight loss or weight management journey. Now that we understand what conditioning is, let's explore the three factors that can improve it. So, stick around as we delve into the nitty-gritty of tracking output, measuring the cost of the workout, and determining the frequency of workouts. You won't want to miss this. The first factor to consider when improving your conditioning is tracking your output. Now you may wonder, what exactly does that mean? Well, in the realm of fitness, output refers to the work you're doing during your workout. This could be the number of calories you burn, the distance you run, the weight you lift, or even the number of reps you do in a set. Tracking output is akin to keeping a fitness diary. It's about recording your performance and progress over time. You see, without tracking your output, it's hard to know if you're actually improving. It's like trying to navigate without a compass. You're moving, but you're not sure if you're getting closer to your destination. So how can you track your output effectively? There are numerous ways. Some people prefer old school methods like jotting down their workout details in a notebook. Others might opt for digital tools like fitness apps that record and analyze workout data. There's no right or wrong way. It's about finding what works best for you. Now, why is tracking output so crucial? Firstly, it allows you to see your progress. It's motivating to see how much stronger or faster you've become over time. Secondly, it helps you identify areas for improvement. Maybe you're struggling to increase your running distance or lift heavier weights. Tracking your output can highlight these areas, helping you tweak your workouts to overcome these hurdles. Finally, tracking output can ensure your workouts are effective in achieving your fitness goals. If you're aiming to improve your conditioning, you need to progressively increase your output. That could mean lifting heavier weights, running longer distances, or doing more reps over time. By tracking your output, you can ensure you're making these necessary progressions. But remember, while it's important to push yourself, it's also crucial to listen to your body. Avoid overexertion and give yourself ample time for recovery. Fitness is a journey, not a race. Remember, what gets measured gets managed. So start tracking your output today and take control of your fitness journey. The second factor to consider is measuring the cost of your workout. So, what exactly does it mean to measure the cost of a workout? In simple terms, it's about understanding the energy and effort you're expending during your training sessions. You see, every exercise you do has a cost and we're not talking about gym fees or the price of your sneakers, we're talking about the physiological cost, the toll it takes on your body. Imagine you're running a race, your legs are pumping, your heart is thumping, and you're pouring sweat. You're paying the cost of that race with every beat of your heart, every drop of sweat, and every lungful of air. That's the cost we're talking about. 
But why is it important to know this cost? Well, understanding the cost of your workout allows you to optimize your training. You can make informed decisions about how hard to push yourself, how long to rest, and what exercises to include in your routine. For instance, if you know that a particular exercise is particularly taxing, you might decide to do it early in your workout when you're still fresh. Or, you might choose to balance it with less demanding exercises. Measuring workout cost can also help you manage your energy levels. If you're constantly feeling wiped out after your workouts, it might be because you're overdoing it. By understanding the cost of your exercises, you can adjust your routine to keep your energy levels stable. But how do you measure the cost of a workout? There are a few ways, but one of the simplest is to listen to your body. How do you feel during and after your workout? Are you exhausted, or do you still have energy left? Are you sore for days, or do you recover quickly? These are all clues that can help you gauge the cost of your workout. As you can see, understanding the cost of your workout is key to getting the most out of your conditioning. The third and final factor to consider is determining the frequency of your workouts. Now, you may think that the more frequently you work out, the better your conditioning will be. However, it's not always that simple. Improving your conditioning isn't just about how often you exercise. It's about finding a balance that allows your body to recover, adapt, and improve. Each time you work out, you're intentionally putting stress on your body. This stress, in controlled amounts, is beneficial. It's what prompts your body to adapt and become stronger, more efficient, and more resilient. But too much stress, without adequate recovery, can lead to overtraining, which can hinder your progress and increase your risk of injury. Here's where the art of balance comes into play. Your workout frequency should be high enough that you're consistently challenging your body and prompting it to adapt, but not so high that you don't give your body the chance to recover and reap the benefits of your hard work. So, how do you find this balance? Well, it varies from person to person. Factors such as your current fitness level, your specific goals, and your lifestyle all play a role in determining your optimal workout frequency. A good rule of thumb is to aim for at least three to four conditioning workouts per week. This provides a balance between workout and recovery days, allowing you to make consistent progress without risking overtraining. In the end, remember that improving your conditioning is a marathon, not a sprint. It's about consistent, sustainable progress, not quick fixes. So take the time to determine the workout frequency that's right for you, and be willing to adjust it as needed. Finding the right balance in workout frequency can make a significant difference in your conditioning. So, are you ready to take your conditioning to the next level with these three fitness factors? Let's take a moment to recap what we've discussed. We began by understanding the significance of conditioning in enhancing our overall fitness and its edge over generic cardio workouts. Conditioning workouts are focused, goal-oriented, and can substantially reduce the risk of injury, improve coordination, and boost fat-burning potential. Then, we dived into the first factor, tracking output. Remember, it's essential to keep a record of your performance to assess your progress and set new goals. It's not just about hitting the gym every day, it's about understanding what you're achieving in each session. Next, we discussed the second factor, measuring the cost of your workout. This doesn't refer to the monetary aspect, but rather the energy expenditure and the toll it takes on your body. It's all about finding that sweet spot between pushing your limits and not overexerting yourself. Finally, we explored the third factor, determining the frequency of your workouts. It's important to strike a balance between training hard and giving your body the rest it needs to recover and grow. Remember, consistency is the key here. Now it's your turn to implement these factors into your workout routine and embark on a journey to improve conditioning. Do you have any other tips for improving conditioning? We'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends and family. Stay healthy, stay happy.